This is the Lefty Ocho, the eighth iteration of Cannondale's one-legged, upside-down suspension fork. It came to the market 23 years ago. It's seen plenty of World Cups, and it has a fiercely loyal following, yet it is still extremely weird. Every day, someone sees a Lefty in the wild for their first time, and they say, how does that not snap in half? We'll talk about that today, as well as some of the lefties' surprising advantages over two-legged suspension forks. We'll also discuss why the lefty is still relatively uncommon and weird. Welcome back to Burn Peak. I'm Seth, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different, but kind of the same. Indeed, the Lefty stands alone as the weird bike product to rule them all because it has stayed weird. Think about saddles with holes in the middle. When those first started becoming popular, it probably looked a little bit weird. I know the first time I saw it, I thought it was weird, but now what saddle doesn't have some kind of hole or pressure relief zone? Now, the other unfortunate future for weird bike products is they disappear because they were too weird or they didn't catch on. The Lefty stands alone as the only bike product that has been around for 23 years and hasn't become normal. It's still weird. The first time anybody sees it, they just can't even believe it's physically possible. Even if you own a Lefty, even if you live someplace where you see Lefties every single day, it's still only got one leg. But that's not the only thing that's weird about it. Far from it. So it's also an upside down fork in that the upper is this big tube over here and the stanchion is down at the bottom. Now, the other strange thing about the lefty is that you can access the entire wheel. If you wanna change the tire, you actually don't have to take the wheel off the bike. There's nothing blocking it, but you have to remove the brake caliper. Now, the lefties of old were actually a pretty big pain. You have to unbolt the caliper just like you were removing it. The new one, the Ocho, it has this little quick release lever over here, and you can just pop the caliper off if you want to remove the wheel. So now with the front wheel off, you can see this kind of spectacle over here. Probably looks like a whole bunch of components, but it's actually one piece of metal. From here, all the way up to the stanchion, up to the mechanism that's inside of the upper, it's all one forged piece of metal. And indeed, that is one of the most expensive parts of the fork to manufacture. And the reason that has to be done is because this has to support a tremendous amount of force. Now, the major downside to this is that to have a lefty, you need to have a hub that's compatible with it, and only a few people make it. And so, yeah, if you have an old set of cross-country wheels around and you get a new bike with a lefty, you can't use those old wheels without changing out the hub. But if you think that's weird, the old lefty, like every single version before this, was dual crown. So the crown, this part of the fork, there was two of them. There was one of them on top of the head tube, like a downhill bike. And these are mainly cross-country forks. This has 110 millimeters of travel. So you had a bunch of cross-country bikes with dual crown forks. That's like taking a Japanese tuner car and putting a front loader on it. Another advantage that I noticed this morning is that if you put this on a tailgate, it fits really, really nice. The wheel goes flat up against the car and the tire touches and the down tube touches. There's no part of the fork resting on the tailgate pad or anything like that. I suspect that very few lefty owners have discovered this advantage while securing their bike to the rack on their Porsche Cayenne. So the fact that the Lefty looks so different from its competitors seems like Cannondale must have done this for marketing. But actually, this design has a lot of characteristics that make it perform differently and in a lot of ways better than some of the competition. Now, in the mid-90s, they had a suspension system that was above the fork and below the head tube. There was like a little shock boot right here in the center. And indeed, the lefty contains a few remnants from the head shock. The main ones being a keyed stanchion and needle bearings. So I will now explain to you what both of those are. So here you can see two pipes that kind of fit inside of each other, just like 
the upper and the stanchion on the lefty. And so you might ask yourself, how is that stanchion staying straight? It's a cylinder, it should just be spinning around, but actually up inside the upper, it's shaped like a triangle. It can only fit in one way and it can't rotate. But that's not the only weird thing about it. So in a two-legged fork, you have two stanchions and the fact that there are two of them pressed into the same crown keeps them from rotating. Lefty uses a keyed stanchion that keeps it from rotating, but there's another key difference. See, the stanchion passes through a rubber wiper seal in the lower, and so when you get a typical fork going, it has to overcome that initial stiction in order to start moving. A lefty uses needle bearings, and what a needle bearing is, it's like a cylindrical bearing. It's actually rolling against something instead of sliding against something. It doesn't have to overcome the same stiction that a typical two-legged fork does, and some people say that it gives a smoother ride. Now, I spent the morning riding this around, and it was remarkably smooth. It's definitely a different feeling from any other fork I've ever ridden. Now, the craziest part about it is that it's stiff. It turns out that in its class, like high-end cross-country forks, it is the stiffest one that you can buy. Now, it's not stiff because it has one leg. It's stiff because it's upside down. On the lefty, the crown and the upper are all one piece. So you don't have a junction until you get down here. And then because the fork is not like pressed up against some plastic and wiper seals, there's basically no play anywhere. It's all one big rigid piece. Not to mention that the part of the fork that would have play in it is at the bottom where there is less leverage. So we've established that the lefty is really weird and we've talked a little bit about how it works. But for it to remain weird all this time, it has to be good enough where people keep buying it. And then there has to be something about it that keeps everybody from buying it. Why are these still relatively uncommon? It is $1,600, it's a lot of money. Even the alloy version of this is $1,000 and compared to the competition, it's just not as good of a value. And so despite the very real advantages of the lefty, there are several reasons why you don't just see them everywhere. So perhaps the biggest reason, bigger than the price, is that up until recently, lefties only worked on Cannondale bicycles. Now the Lefty Ocho will fit on just about any bike with a tapered head tube. And so you're starting to see them pop up on other XC bikes here and there. Not only do you need this expensive fork, but you also have to lace your rim onto a new proprietary hub that also costs money. And then there's servicing it. So if you already have a two-legged fork and you've been servicing it, you likely have a lot of fluids and tools and parts laying around. None of those are gonna work on your lefty. You basically have to start from scratch. Not only that, but Cannondale is not gonna help you. So while other fork manufacturers have service manuals and tech support, Cannondale is kind of dealer only. They don't really help consumers service their forks. Now, to be clear, they don't care if you do, and you can get the parts and you can find tutorials online. It's not gonna void your warranty to do 100 hour fork service. But for people who really like to service everything on their own bike, a lefty is probably gonna be their last choice. But most lefty owners don't care. The type of customer that drops their lefty off for service is best not distracted with such things. I, for one, do not want my anesthesiologist thinking about the roller bearings on their lefty Ocho. I mean, for God's sake, they named the bike the Scalpel. It's not like these people can't service the fork. They just don't care. They can't be bothered with it. They're gonna drop it off and then go do cosmetic surgery on somebody's knee or something. Now, it's worth noting that if you dig deep enough in most suspension products, you're gonna find something that the manufacturer doesn't want you dicking with. But the reasons you might decide against the lefty go beyond the price and service. At least once every ride, somebody's gonna say, hey, your fork's missing a leg. <laughs> and they're gonna think they're the only person that's ever come up with that, and it's gonna start to get annoying. Not to mention, it screams cross country. It just shouts it from the mountaintops. But people still buy the lefty. Lots of people still buy it and they're fiercely loyal 
there are huge fans out there of this fork, and to be honest, I can kind of see why. It's really different, and it feels good when you're going really fast through chattery terrain. It is smooth, and it is undeniably stiff. You can definitely feel it, and that's a really good characteristic for any part on a cross-country bike. And so it's the very real benefits and advantages of the Lefty that have made it last for this long through eight iterations, but because of its cost and all those quirks, it has remained a niche product that's still weird. I know there are tons of videos out there on the Lefty, but I hope I gave you a slightly different perspective. I hope you found it interesting, and I hope you learned something. If you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. By the way, this is not my Cannondale scalpel. I borrowed it, but every time I ride an XC bike, I kind of secretly want one until I start going downhill, and then I remember why not a lot of people have them around here. Um, but man, it is so fast, and it is so light. It's pretty sick when you have to climb something.